Hi, it's Janice Tark here and welcome back to the Music Teachers Q&A. This is the place you want to be if you want to have a more successful and fulfilling music teaching career. Now most of these Q&A sessions so far have been around topics related to classroom music. However, we know a lot of people in our mailing list aren't classroom teachers. Instead, they're private studio teachers and they're teaching instruments like piano, guitar and inst wind instruments as well. You see, I've done both in my career. I started out teaching private lessons, then I taught classroom for a few years before returning to teaching studio lessons, and then running my own music school. So I've had loads of experiences I can share. But one thing I do know is that teaching private studio lessons can be just as challenging as the classroom. Sure, you might have only one or two students at a time, but it can still be frustrating and difficult at times. Anyway, I am not here to discuss today the merits of studio teaching versus classroom teaching. We're here to help people. So today I'd love it if all the private studio teachers could help us out in the comments section below this video, just to help with this question as I'm sure that a lot of great input is going to be added to this discussion. Now today's question comes from Lisa in Orlando and she says, I need tips for teaching very young beginners, that means five or six year olds, piano. They have very limited attention spans and it's difficult to keep them interested. All one student wants to do is to play during his lesson. I use games in my teaching but they don't want to settle down and play the piano for the remainder of the lesson. Sometimes I have to threaten to call on the student's parents so he will cooperate. Thank you so much for your question on that Lisa because I know that's a huge issue for so many teachers. And do I have a lot to share with you in this one? You see, because I did not only run a music school for over five years which specialised in teaching five and six year olds, my daughter is also seven now and she learns the piano. So I've been through it all as a parent as well and it is so different. So today I want to have two little ideas for you which may help and I'd love everyone else to contribute their ideas below this video so we can have a collection of really helpful ideas for Lisa and for anyone else in this situation. The first idea I have is to work in child time segments. Now you said that they had some limited attention spans and you know what? You're exactly on the money. You're exactly right. You've got the entire right answer there in that statement. However, instead of looking at that as a problem, why don't we switch our thinking around to thinking of a solution? Now this is what I mean. With an older student, you can have one or two pieces that they're currently working on and you can work through them in a lesson and there is really, rarely enough time to do what you need to do. They can concentrate totally on a piece for 5, 10, 15 minutes and it's never a problem at all. However, with a 5 or 6 year old or even younger, they can't even concentrate long enough. So what you need to do is to work within that limitation and structure the activities that don't last longer than more than 3 minutes at a time. Yes? I'm saying it right, that is right, three minutes. So it's very different ball game because a half an hour lesson now needs to consist of about 10, two or three minute segments. That's it. If you can't do it in two or three minutes, then you can't do it with a five year old. And that's just the way it works at these lessons. Now, so here is how I might structure a piano lesson for a typical five year old. Now, you might pick three pieces from their book but you wouldn't want to do them one after the other because you might want to do a super simple worksheet like one maybe of the junior musicianship ones that we'll share below for you. And you might want to do a listening game which is just like an oral training activity. You might want to do a simple scale that you can get a little magnet board out and have them place a note on it. Or you might want them to play a percussion instrument in time with the recording. And then you might at the end, if they've done all of their pieces well, play some kind of a musicianship game like one of the many free printable music game samples I've shared with you in the past. Now I know this looks like a lot, and it is, but remember these activities have to be a maximum of three minutes long. That means that they won't necessarily achieve their piece perfectly. You have to just get used to moving quickly to the next thing because if you dwell on it for too long then they just won't get it and it won't happen. Well that sort of brings me on to my second idea for you which is to use creative incentives. Now that's the other thing I picked up from your question. You said I use games in my teaching but they don't want to settle down and play the piano for the remainder of the lesson. 
Now what I read from that is that while you're using games, which is great and the kids clearly enjoy them, you aren't quite leveraging the game as an incentive to do all the other things as well. Now I've had a think about this and since I've become a parent, I totally understand the concept of incentive a whole lot more. Children just don't do anything without a reason and I'm not talking about bribing, there is a difference. And although it's a subtle one, it is very important. Now if a child thinks I'm only going to do this if I get this, then it's never going to work. If they think they can bargain to get what they want, then you probably need to just shift strategy as that won't work either. However, if a child just knows that once they've done their jobs, then they can have fun, then you'll find a total change in their character. So that's all you need to do. Have a rule that says if you don't get through your second, third or whatever pieces you want, then they don't get a game. But you wouldn't call it a rule in front of them. That's just not fun. <laughs> it's simple. Just try to keep it so basic and easy to understand. They'll also start to understand that if they practice, then they're going to please you with the pieces and therefore they're going to get onto the game quicker as well. Hi Mary, did you enjoy that game we played last week? Have I got a great one for you today? But I do know we've got to get you through your pieces and a couple of other bits and pieces first, so let's go. Another key point with incentives is to change them regularly. Now, if children get bored with the same things, then just go ahead and change it. Now there are loads of great ideas you can use. You can use stickers, you can have a little treasure box full of little trinkets and party favours you can get from the cheap shop. You'll be amazed at what a child can do with the plastic metal on a string which cost you just 50 cents from a junk shop. However, anything will get tired if you don't change it up regularly. So make sure you're always being inventive about what you do. So what do you think? Now I was going to share a lot more, but just in two ideas, I've already gone way too long for this one video. So now it's your turn to contribute. Please go ahead, fill in your ideas for keeping just the little ones engaged in their private studio music lessons in the comment box below this video. I can't wait to hear your ideas and hopefully we can make this page a lasting and valuable resource for teachers all over the world. So I look forward to seeing you next time on Music Teachers Q&A.